Hey everyone, how you going? This is Brock. Welcome back to Mining Engineer Plays Minecraft. And today we're going to look at our first underground mining method, which is the room and pillar method. Uh, just before we get started, you'll notice that I've come down a decline and I've gone south here. And that's just because we have uh, a lot of planned infrastructure happening on the northern side over near where the creeper flusher is. So we don't really want to be working underneath that. Even though the ground does appear to be quite competent, we're not sure what's in the roof. We haven't done any geotechnical testing, so it could be hollow for all we know. And that would be very bad and put us at risk of a collapse. Room and pillar is one of the oldest mining methods. This modern variation has been used for about 150 years in the United States and Australia. And it's essentially just a grid of roadways which cover a huge area of an underground ore body and the roadways uh, represent the rooms in the title and obviously the pillars in between are what provide the roof support so usually we would shape it to the ore body and just take out the the highest valued sections but because this is minecraft and we don't actually know where the ore is or anything like that um, pretty much what we're going to do is just take out perfect grids and avoid any lava pockets so that's going to be kind of our the way that we shape the progression of the the mine plan and because it's quite hard rock that we're dealing with here we can use a pillar that has a smaller area than the roadways um on a percentage basis so most of our planned area below here will be mined out this mining method is best suited to non steeply dipping or horizontal ore bodies as we have in minecraft and what a lot of the traditional minecraft mining methods use such as strip mining and ideally we would have two benches of this stacks uh, above each other so we would have it taking out these three blocks and then I'd have a, a bench which is pushed back a bit into the wall so further advanced than the, the lower level and we'd have some some operators working up there taking that ahead of this so that we could cover a much thicker slice but since it's Minecraft and there's only one of me in this world it'd be too much hassle to go up and down and up and down between the two blasting levels so we're just going to use the one I'm just going to count this redstone here one two three four okay so we're going to want to bring it out probably about here and I'm actually going to make some repeaters because we want all of these to detonate at the same time to avoid any lost material get this back a safe distance let's have a look what we got about a stack of cobblestone from that Well, that's not bad at all as you can see pretty much everything on the top row is what we got from those blasts plus this 12 coal I've spaced each of the TNT laterally apart five blocks because as you can see from this decline blasting I did which I use the same method for I was just planting the two TNT uh, in, in the six block driven hole and you can see that it, it does a, a three by three tunnel pretty consistently but a lot of the time it'll take um, these extra blocks on the side and the, and the top so 
it allows us to go five blocks between and anything that's left on this middle pillar we'll be able to see so we, we pretty much get full visibility um, except for this little section behind these blocks down the bottom and so that allows us to come in and pick out any ores that we want that didn't get picked up in the blast I tested the recovery rates on this earlier in my experimental creative world and I was getting about 97% recovery from each of these uh, each of these blasts and that was, went down to about 73% in some instances where there was dirt or gravel behind it which pretty much got exploded by the first TNT and then because the reach was larger due to the uh, high blast ability or low strength of the rock it meant that the second patch of TNT destroyed the dropped items as they were sitting on the, the ground around it. And it does recover all the redstone, so that's definitely a bonus. Yep, so pretty much none of the ore is lost. And what, what's then going to happen is I'm going to set up a little system here. Yeah, we're going to have a chest. And I think probably we'll just throw a block here. Have a powered rail. Bit of that. I've actually decided to change this up. And I'm going to have a... Where I was originally going to have a hopper minecart here. Which sends the extracted materials up. I'm now going to have a chest minecart so we can hold a bit more and it's just got a, a a chest which we will dump everything in like so and then that's automatically loading the minecart and when that's done we can just hit this button and I'll send it up and I'll set up an automatic system so that when it gets to the top It'll stay there until the minecart's fully unloaded, and then it'll send it back down to us. So that way we won't have to keep running out, and I've set that track up on the uh, the northern side here. So that way we can wrap around there and not worry about breaking through and ending up on the river on that side. That way we won't have to cross over the tracks at all, we should be able to just keep everything out of the way. Now let's set up another little blast here and I'm curious to see how this is going to go because there's dirt in the wall here. So again, dig out one block in the stand and then five. Which is just as far as you can reach. And then we fill her up. Leave a gap, TNT, leave two gaps, TNT. Plug the hole. Run the redstone out. And we're going to actually need a few more repeaters here, I think. Disconnect this for safety reasons. So that we don't ac accidentally set anything off. Run it in. Dig one block into the, the flush wall. As far as we can with the pickaxe. Then again. TNT on the outer. Another one there. Link it up. One in. Dig as far as you can. TNT in the hole. Link her up. Now again, these should all go off. Um, I'm actually going to redo the timing on these here, so going to put these repeaters one block in. That allows us to bring this redstone. Actually, we're going to go one further. And this will become more natural each time we do it. We won't have to think about it so much. So then, just run our redstone wire, wire right along here. And 
and we're going to need our repeater here just to make sure the current gets all the way to the end. So let's just count it out. One, two, three. Yep, 15 blocks and a redstone current will travel 16, so that's fine. And because they're all getting the same delay, the first repeater plus the second repeater, that's a two tick delay for each of them. They should also go off at the same time. So now we can just stand back. Grab our torch and we're ready to set it off. Now, order of operations. This is a pretty standard mining operation. It's used also in a lot of declines for a lot of different mining methods. The standard sequence is come in, you drill the holes, you plant the explosives, you get back, you blow it up, then you come in, collect the ore. So you've got a jumbo that comes in and drills the holes. And once it's, once it's blown, you've then got your bogger or loader which comes in, scoops up all the materials, drives out and either dumps it in a truck or some other kind of conveyor system, which in this case will be our minecart. And we are the loader. So then after that, you may have... Uh, some other machines come in, such as bolters, and just install some, some roof supports to make sure it's all safe for work, as well as your ventilation would be routed in, which is often just a, a small fan with a bit of tubing to get, to get air to the face, because there's not going to be any natural airflow at this depth, but luckily we don't have to worry about that in Minecraft. So let's blow this again. Just going to check these one last time. Looks like they're all okay. I've probably gone back a little bit too far for that one, but it shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad. We can always do some clearing with the pickaxe afterwards if needed. Let's set her off. I'm a bit concerned that last one didn't go off. Oh no, it did. Perfect. Yeah, so it's left a couple blocks here, but that's not the end of the world. Let's get it lit up. Looks like we've blown into a bit of a cave there, which is good. Might expose some free ores for us. I actually really don't know what's happened here. It must have just been full of dirt, I think. So it's blown a huge crater. Which again, it's not the end of the world. It's it's free free materials at the end of the day. It just makes it a bit messy for us to set up the next blast, that's all. So again, the top row in my inventory is pretty much what we got from that. A few stacks of materials. Uh, actually, probably one of those cobblestone stacks as well. We're not getting too many ores, but I think we're probably just getting unlucky there and missing them. So I'm going to throw it all in this container. And let our minecart... Minecart keep filling up. Now what I'm realizing is that we're going to need a lot more repeaters to make this a, a nice process. So let's get a bunch of those made up and let's replace this torch with a button so that we don't have to keep breaking it and fiddling with it. Yep, so now what we're just going to do, we've got 16 T, so we can do one more set. We're just going to run this. Actually not sure if we'll need a repeater. We may as well throw one in though. So this is our block one. Mine it out. Plant the explosives. Put in our stemming. And our stemming is just to stop some of the explosive force from rifling back out the holes just creating some resistance to stop this explosion blasting back up our tunnels and keeping it contained where we where we want it to move material plant the explosives 
plug it up, run the wires. And let's just throw a repeater here. Which is not going to work. We'll put it here. Now this one should be good. We should get a bit of coal from this blast, so... The only problem is we're definitely going to lose that bit of coal which is already loose there, sitting on the ground. That shouldn't be the end of the world. And again, throw in our repeater. Got the stemming. Everyone clear. We'll check them on the way back. And then we hit the detonate. Really love the sound of that. Come in, nice clean blast that one, which is good. Let's see this one. I think we've gone, yeah, we've gone a block too low on this, but it's not the end of the world. And then I'm just going to break through and check out our final blast here. And again, it looks pretty good. We did get 12 coal from that which is probably expected since it, it did miss a large portion of this. And I think we're good to go. That's all our TNT, so we're going to have to come back later when we've done a restock. Wait on our creeper farm a bit. But so far, I'd say it's worked pretty well. Naturally, it's going to miss a lot of the ores because they do spawn in such small patches and they, you know, they get caught in the roof and the walls and it's quite easy for the TNT to not reach them. But... If nothing else, we are uncovering a lot of them quite easily. And while we're doing it, we're getting a lot of cheap cobblestone without all the labor of mining. So this will help us when we get into some big building projects, uh, like one I've got to show you that I've started off camera. And I was a bit worried about our hopper and chest filling up a bit too slow here, but it seems to be keeping up really well. And what I'm going to do is just leave this redstone set up. So the next time we come down, we can just keep extending it. Now I'm going to come in and collect some of these ores from the sides and I'll let you know how much I got. So how it should look is we should have nice little neat roadways with neat pillars in between. But because of the different rock hardness, we are getting uneven blasting, which in real life you could combat that by using less explosives if you, if you knew what was coming up. Because it's unlikely that you'd see such a, a huge uh, swing in rock strength in, over such small distances so yeah we've got some we've got some work to do these these are pretty messy this isn't uh geotechnically sound and we are missing quite a lot of ores so if it proves to be too inefficient then i will just remove these pillars for the sake of getting that that high productivity by doing that we risk uh dilution or losing materials from the blast overlapping each other so this is what i got a, a stack and a half of redstone Plus the rest on the top row. That's that's just what I got from mining out the little bit of ore that got exposed. So what will happen is as the mine keeps progressing, I'll keep shifting this minecart station closer to us. So we have to walk less distance to get back to it. I haven't actually rigged this up properly yet, but I'm going to need some more iron and other materials before I do that. So we're going to have to get back to the creeper farm because we are once again low on TNT. All right. Let's jump over to the creeper flusher and I'll show you some of what I've been working on. So I started building a bit of a, a tower around this just so that we can start getting it covered up and uh, more practical and less dangerous to the world. So I've played around with the design a bit and I think I'm going to keep it as this. I've got this basically a big square. You can see I've changed the water as well, just brought it out a little bit and removed any of the dead spots took quite a while to get it to flow perfectly like this and i wanted to keep the water pretty deep as well because it pushes them faster that way yeah and so I, pretty much i brought it out so that when they fall there's no chance of them missing originally i had it all square but it was a bit bit bland because in one of the mock designs i did in a creative world i used a smaller smaller footprint and so you didn't notice the, the large empty spaces as much, but I think we can get this looking pretty nice with these little staggered 
uh, walls here. So if we come in here, you can see I've lifted the redstone here. So basically I've taken it off the ground and now I run it around here just so that we're not walking in the door and running into it. And I've also moved it back a bit and I've moved our ladder out of the way so that we can stay separated from the mobs. And I've got a nice little falling platform here. So this looks really cool when it's in action. There's so many mobs that drop in here and just have a party in the middle. The redstone runs down here through a little stairway into here. And I'm actually today going to work on an, a little hopper clock called an RS Gnaw Latch. What this does... Is it just, after a set amount of time, it'll send a redstone pulse. And we're going to use that to time the flushing system so that it's automated. That way we won't have to keep coming up and down the ladder to uh, hit the flush button. It should just automatically, after say 40 seconds, flush and then unflush. So that we can get some more mobs building up. Yeah, so it's a pretty basic design. Uh, this is what you're going to need, plus the two hoppers I've already placed. So... Now we're going to take our comparators, we're going to stand here, place them like that, and if I'm not mistaken, place a redstone torch here and here, my bad, here and here, and then we've got our repeater here which runs into a block which has a torch on it which has another repeater running into another block which also has a torch on it torch goes there And it's all coming together here. That runs to there. And then we just take the current from this torch. And so how this works is we now put a number of items in here. I'm going to start with... Yeah, we'll try 32, I think. And so how this pretty much works is the comparator detects when the hopper is empty. And then... It locks the other one so that it can't accept any more items, so that the hoppers can only flow one way. Because otherwise they keep going continuously back and forward between each other, and kind of glitch out. But this way, it means that only one hopper can fill up at a time from the other hopper. And as it changes from hopper to hopper, it changes from a redstone signal to no redstone signal. So now we should be able to just hook this straight up to our button, or our, our flusher. And it should automatically turn the water on and off. So let's just go up here and have a look. We might need a repeater in there if the current can't reach that far. Yeah, okay, so we're going to need a repeater here. Somewhere. I think I'm just going to pop it right here. And hope that, that reaches. And it's one block short still. You're joking. And this little guy is going to go just here. Yep, perfect. So you can see it's dispensed the water. I'm actually just going to set it to day real quick so we can see. This looks like it's all hooked up and working now. And what happens is the redstone pulse powers the dispenser and then when the 32 blocks transfer back to the other hopper, it'll unpower the dispenser, which won't have any effect. But then when it repowers again, it'll suck the bucket in. So you see it unpowered, water's still there, still flushing them. And then in a second it'll power up again. So I think it's probably set a bit long, because I think the mobs will be well and truly off the platform by then. So what we can do to fix that... Is we can come down here and we can just take out some of these items 
So if we just leave, say, 10 of them out, so we're working with only 20 blocks now, I think we should get a, a better time. So water's out. You can picture the mobs bouncing, bouncing, closer to the edge, getting there, falling off. Going. Maybe there's still some spiders clung to the edge. Yeah, that's that's probably a pretty suitable amount of time. We could probably take a, a few more blocks out. But at least this way, it also gives us more time for the mobs to spawn in that stage. Yeah. I think that timing's fine. Because we don't want it too short, otherwise it's not going to give enough time for mobs to fill up the platforms before it flushes. So I think we'll roll with that and we can always adjust it later. So that is, I believe, 22 items. Yep. And so the plan for underground here is on this side we'll have the redstone with deals with the flushing mechanism. And then on the other side, I'm going to have another entrance. So if we come up here, you can see directly opposite there's another room over there. We'll have a section underground which deals with the logistics of exporting our gunpowder and other materials. So on that side we'll also have some sorting setups. I suppose. So item sorters, which separate the gunpowder and other other drops. And I think it'll come along pretty nicely. And it works out that with those two TNT blocks in our room and pillar mining method, we get about 90 blocks of destruction. So it, it works out to about one sand and one gunpowder per 10 blocks mined. And if you got to collect the gunpowder manually with a sword, it's it's really not worth it to use explosive mining in Minecraft. But if we can get this automated and, and then all we have to worry about is the sand, then I think it's great and it's going to pay off really well. Thanks for watching, guys. So I'll see you in the next episode. Okay, so our mobs are actually despawning before they hit the magma because we're too far away. If we're 128 blocks away, then they automatically despawn. So what we're going to have to do is bring this platform further over the mob spawner. And I'm going to bring it down a little bit just to be safe because it doesn't really matter if we get a few, um, you know, in the surrounding area. So long as there's not too many and it's not reaching most of the caves underground. You can see there's still a heap of guys over there, so I wonder if we just jump up. Okay, now they go on. So this is our perfect height by the looks of it.